All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today's webinar is What Valve is Right for Your Application. Uh, I'm Amy Zucchi. I'm the Director of Marketing for Maco Norca. I will be introducing the webinar. Um, before we start, I just have a couple of housekeeping items to go over. Uh, we are going to be recording this session. Uh, everybody is on mute. Uh, we're going to look to take questions after every valve that we talk about, or if you have something really pressing, just hit the raise the hand and we can address a question or write it in the question box and we'll get to it eventually. Uh, and if we don't, we'll be able to be available for question and answer um, post event as well. Uh, after the event, we will shoot you guys over the slides, the recording and any related uh, literature that we have relating to these valves. And again, we'll have some follow-up questions and whatever else. Um, so you guys probably know a lot about Maconorca, but we've been around for 71 years. We're the largest independent branded sourcing company for valves, fittings, and nipples, faucets, and plumbing specialty products. Uh, we serve the plumbing and heating industries, irrigation, waterworks, pool and spa, industrial, and OEM. Uh, our presentation is led by Jim DeCola. He's been with Matco for 27 years working within our waterworks department. Um, working with him today is Zed Hernandez, the VP of Technical and Specifications at Champions. Uh, Champions is one of our rep agencies. We're thrilled to have him be part of this presentation. He's also responsible for the wonderful lighting that you see on the set today. Um, so I'm just going to go over really quickly. I'm not going to go through the bullet points, but today we're going to be discussing uh, gate valves. Here's an installation shot. Uh, check valves, the installation shot. Uh, and plug valves. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand this over to Jim, who will uh, take it from here. Thank you, Amy. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for attending today. And we know there's a lot of people out there. So, again, thank you for your interest, uh, not only in MATCO, but also in, in the MATCO valve. And thank you, too, to Zed for for uh, showing up today and putting the time in. We appreciate that, too. Happy to be a part of it. So, um, well, I heard we're going to talk about valves today. We so are. What type of valves are we going to be covering, Jim? So, in particular, like Amy said, we're going to be talking about gate valves, check valves, and plug valves. So what what are the different types of configurations we typically see with gate valves and why is that important to our listeners today? Yeah, so um, mechanical joint, I guess, is going to be the number one valve that we'll see out there. And it's um, mainly for underground purposes. If you can see the end connections, this is mechanical joint. There are also flange valves and tapping valves and MJ by flange and different variations of that, which we'll get to as yeah. we go through sure. each valve. We do have a cutaway here that we can go through and show just some of the talking points. That, if, if everybody can see that, moving in the middle here. Um, so I guess the first thing to bring up would be our heavy-duty stainless steel stem. And you can see how this thing is operating, right? That's called a gate valve because the gate is actually literally going up and down as you operate it. Um, and, and, and maybe it's important to... Uh, point out too that these are all for the most part manual valves so you manually go up to it with either a valve key or hand wheel will show it yeah. to operate the valve yeah. but getting back to this uh, so uh, our, our heavy duty stainless steel stem we also put a valve tag on every one of our valves kind of tells uh, the installer what to do what not to do what the valve is made for that kind of thing well what, what give me some examples of stuff they shouldn't do I guess. Um, so again, this is a waterworks valve, and for the most part, everything we're going to be talking about is waterworks or wastewater, so potable water or wastewater. Uh, what we wouldn't want to see or what you wouldn't want to use this valve for would be a steam application, okay. right, or high-pressure application. Uh, it's an epoxy-coated waterworks valve. The average pressures are probably like 60 PSI. It's good for up to 300 PSI, but average potable water uh, pressure in a system is 40 to 60 PSI. 
um, epoxy coated, so that's not going to hold under steam either. So petroleums, you wouldn't want to use this in a petroleum application. So no oil, no gasoline. You know, Matco does uh, have another part of their line that offers that kind of a valve. But for, again, today we're doing waterworks. Yeah. And what are so, some other features, I guess, on on our gate valve? Yeah. So um, we can see the stem O rings on this valve. And typically in AWWA applications, uh, people who talk about it talk about two up and one down, right? So What's that mean? Two O-rings would be above this thrust collar area. So two O-rings up here and one below. When Matco designed this valve, um, we identified that overall, and the majority of the time, if there's a problem or a leak in a valve anywhere, it's at the stem. And so what we did when we designed a valve, we put a, a third O-ring up on top. So we have three O-rings on top, one O-ring below. Uh, we're the only ones that do that. We've never had a leak. So never? Never. So if they need, if it's leaking, how would they go about repairing it? And do we provide the gaskets and stuff, I guess, for that? Yeah, we 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 do keep parts in stock for that. Um, and that it, you can actually repair that under pressure. So with the valve all the way open, and you can see the wedge coming up, the wedge is going to come up and it's going to make a seal in this area. So even with pressure, you can take this top area off, remove it, replace the stem O-rings, which will, fi will fix a leak if you would have one, put it back, and you're in business again. Or if something should happen, you know, oftentimes uh, people are working with these and, and they'll hit it with a backhoe or something like that, maybe do damage to the top. Again, don't have to take it out of line. Uh, you can just replace this top part, take this out, put a new one in. You're back in business basically with a new valve. Um, and, you know, to that point, Matco uses stainless steel bolts, and we cover the bolt. Each bolt has a covering on top. So 10 years down the road, if, you're, if you need to get into this valve, you can take the cover off, and down in that hole, you're going to see a, a stainless steel bolt like it was factoring in easy easy to get into and that's to prevent for corrosion from the water or the elements or whatever it's touching i guess during the yeah. installation yeah so corrosion resistance that's that's the buzzword right so stainless steel everything and to your point again uh corrosion resistance we do we have 20 mils epoxy on average on these valves everybody else in the industry is basically 10 mils maybe 12 mils 20 mils epoxy, some almost double. Okay, for that's good. For corrosion resistance, yeah. So that'll give a longer life. Speaking of that, what, what's our warranty on these, on our valves? 10-year uh, warranty. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess that's going to, I guess that's going to be probably all the show there. And when we start thinking about, people talk about oversized waterways or if it's fully open and fully closed, what, 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 how do we stand in that? Yeah, so th and that's a big deal, right? Because all these valves are are uh, full waterway valves. So if it's a four inch valve, the, the center of, of where the water is flowing is going to be above four inch. So let's say four and an eighth inch. Um, if 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 you're gonna kind of make a valve and you want to cut some costs, that's a way up cutting costs. And and typically you'll see. Um, some other people that will have a, a, a smaller port diameter, and uh, and that's the reason why. But if you want a full full flow valve, and you do want a full flow valve, you know, go for the Matco valve. Um, All right. And then that was that was a mechanical joint that we showed. So now we're going to show the flange, okay, right? which is popular as well. So, so we'll show these go together. Too. So. How would somebody decide, I guess, what flange versus mechanical joint? Is that all just based on the system that they have already there or pre-selected, I guess? Yeah, several different ways of, of determining that. Either it's uh, dictated to you by an engineer or, or the municipality or, you know, typical uh, installation underground is going to be mechanical joint. We'll show you that a little bit. Okay. Uh, so so what's, what do we got here? This is a mechanical joint side. This will be your flange side. So flat face flange, where flat face gasket go on. And so this is the mechanical joint side. And mechanical joint is for underground purposes. So the reason for that being, you know, 
uh, if, if you drive around town and you see some of the streets that are broken or, you know, they just, you have ground movement, right? And so that's what cracks the streets. So when you have ground movement, your, your, your pipe insulation and your valve insulation is likely to move too. And so when you have an underground connection that's mechanical joint, it allows for what's called deflection and still make a seal. So this, this pipe could actually move inside of, the, of this valve and still keep a seal. Okay, that's important. It's yeah, very important for, for the mechanical time. joint underground. Um, see, let them see that bolt. Now. So yeah, this is what you were probably want to see here. So is this common to have this come over like that bolt, this type of bolt system? Or yeah. is that something specific to... So this is how you bolt the mechanical joint connection together, right? You have a bolt, the gasket, and the gland, which is going to push in on the gasket and make a compression. And that's your seal. So what, what we've done is we've put these grooves behind the mechanical joint side. Everybody can see that. We hope so. Yeah. So there's a groove. And literally, whether you're above ground, because sometimes they're, they're, uh, they're installing this above ground, just like it would be here. And they'll drop it into a ditch, and then they'll, they'll make the connection back here. Or if you're in a ditch, more importantly, if you're trying to make this connection, um, if, if you don't have a way of keeping this bolt, this T-head bolt, which is the way of, of, um, of bolting a mechanical joint valve together is a T-head bolt, it's the only thing to use. If you don't have these hooks, it, it will just swivel and it just makes it harder. So we put the hooks here. You can literally hold it in place with a finger, right, until it gets tight and stung. And then you can put a wrench on it and it's not going to move. So ease of installation for sure, you know. And we keep these kits, right? We do. In fact, everything you see here is is a Matco Norca product. So we sell the we sell the kit, we sell the the, the uh, nipple, the flange, the gasket, the bolts. Sell all of that. So I guess it's not just a valve presentation, huh? I guess not. Yeah. Um. Similarly, I guess since we have it up here where you have the MJ connection, the same thing would happen here above ground. You would have a flange and bolt it together. Flat face flange, the flat face flange. So going back to what you said, uh, where would you not use these? That's kind of involved in that as well. Flat face to flat face, not race face. So there are race face valves out there and race face, I guess, fittings. Yeah, well flanges, things like that. That's that you wouldn't want to put the two together because you can actually snap this flange. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. So, uh, and then the reason this is MJ by flange for, uh, for the most part, mechanical joint is underground, but at some point you need, you need to make a connection to, to a transition to come up above, above ground to like um, a backflow preventer, maybe, or, you know, whatever. Uh, and typically that's where they make that connection. A lot of times they'll put a 90 degree bend on here and then, and then come down with a with a with a spool piece and then make the transition up here on top to flange. But in this case, you could take this valve underground and um, make the transition from mechanical joint to flange and then go to wherever you're going with the flange connection. Um I guess we're getting deep in the weeds yeah, here, but I mean it just keeps going, right? So but, but uh, let me just finish this point. So you know, uh, typically above ground is flange to flange connections because if there is any kind of an issue and you need to uh, disassemble a part of the line. You know, it's real easy just to take something that's flanged to flanged out of the line, right? Put a new one in. Right. When it's mechanical joint, not so much. You got to kind of cut the line. You have to come with a repair sleeve. It's a little bit more complicated. Gotcha. And then you were going to show how this valve is operated with that yeah. valve key. So there's yeah. this particular one. Some of you may or may not know how this how they actually operate these things. And here is the the key and they do keep these here at Maco. I believe we have two different sizes of these keys that we offer to sell. Yeah, it's so another Maco product for sure. Yeah, if, the, if you're if you're a distributor or a, a, a wholesaler that's on the call, um, a lot of people don't know that Maco keeps these in stock. You can you can definitely buy one of these to have on the shelf for the guys that come in to turn off and on these these valves. You and then of course you can yeah. put it on the top. And so people will see that on the sidewalk, right? You'll see a cast iron round kind of a ring with. That's your access to this op nut. So you would pull that lid off of that valve box and you would slip this down and then you can operate the valve from above ground. 
Nice. And you can make extensions. I mean, the valve could be 10 feet, 15 feet underground. This valve could be, this valve could be uh, extended and operated from there. But this is the most common way of doing it. Absolutely. Really. Now, Jim, I've seen this with uh, with a red top on there. What's the difference? Like this guy right up here. What's, yeah. what's the difference? Yeah, good point. So, um, because the one we're dealing with on both of these is black nut, right? So, yeah. in the industry, black nut is open left. So, you would literally, what a lot of people are used to, you turn the valve counterclockwise to open it, open left, right? Okay. That's how you would open a black operating nut or even a black hand wheel for that matter. Same yeah. thing. But yeah, on the red nut, that signifies open right. And so, there are plenty of municipalities still left that. That, that just operate their valves open right. So when you come up to their valve, you turn it right, it's going to open totally opposite from this. And, you know, that's just the way they've been doing it for years. If you get them to change from open right to open left, uh, probably not going to happen, right? And the same way, we, you know, open left would turn open right. Gotcha. So um, one thing else I see here before we move, move on, I took this off and I didn't make mention of it, but this is a flange protector. Uh, we ship the all our flange valves. It protects the flange in shipment. Right, so that you don't have any kind of damage to the flange. So right, you just take this out and you can go with your, your installation. So that's another protective thing. So what other different, uh, I know we have some other valves here. Do you want to highlight these real quick? Yeah, um, so the one on top in the middle is just the six inch mechanical joint gate valve. Similar to, to what we've seen here, open left, because it's got a black off nut. Um, Everything is the same as far as epoxy, stainless steel on all of these valves. Uh, but that is, that's the workhorse, right? I mean, throughout the country, uh, I mean, if everybody's, every, everything is six inch mechanical joint. And as populations grow, we might see that become an eight inch line to be a standard. But for the last 30 years, it's been six inch and it still is six inch. So if you go into a waterworks distributor's yard, you're going to see mountains of six inch mechanical joint valves. So it's mechanical joint on both ends and you can see the, uh, the notches up on top. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, this is a tapping valve open left, right. You can tell that by the operating nut. Yep. Um, it's, it's like a mechanical joint by flange. It's a little different in that it goes onto a tapping sleeve. So if they're going to make a live tap, if there's a line going down the road and they're going to extend off of that and maybe put a subdivision in. They're going to come and wrap a tapping sleeve around that, put this tapping valve on it, and then they can go off and get their water access. And it, it requires a special gasket. And we offer that gasket, which is why you see that plywood on there. So underneath that is a special gasket designed properly with dimensions to fit that tapping valve mate to the tapping sleeve. Gotcha. So, so uh, Jim, can I chime in real quick? We have a, we have a few questions that have come in. Um, somebody asked, are most flange valves the same end-to-end -end dimensions? And this is a two-parter after you answer that. Yeah, so there definitely is standardization. Uh, most flange valves, I don't actually in Waterworks and this type of valve, yes. A four-inch flange valve, a four-inch plug valve, uh, no matter really who the manufacturer is, there is a standard uh, to make to manufacture that valve too. And yes, so there is a definite dimension for that. Okay. And then they went on to say if we're replacing a different brand with a Maco product. Absolutely. So uh, especially if it's flanged. I'm, I guess I shouldn't say that. Um, flanged or mechanical joint. Yeah. Maco and Orca, it, it, it can replace all of those. Okay. Um, somebody else asks, is connection flat and rise can be done? Question mark. Did you understand that one? No. I, can you repeat the question? Please? It just he just wrote connection flat and rise can be done. Um all right, let's move on to another one. Somebody made just a comment. San Antonio is a perfect example of a large municipality that still requires open right. Yeah. Um and then we have, what's the part number for the gasket on the tapping valve? Yeah, so Matco's part number is a, uh, I, I believe it's a GFFTV. So gasket, full face, tap valve, GFFTV. And then the pl applicable size after that. 
Uh, yes, yeah, San Antonio is a big open right market. We're, um, I'd like to say we're close to having our approval there. As close as we are is that we've got approval to uh, put our valve in an installation for it to be reviewed. And, and then they come back and, and, and typically we'll get the, we'll get the acceptance after that. But yes, uh, in fact, city of Houston's the same way. And these are big, big municipalities that are open right still. Um, and then the last question is what sizes do we offer in stock? Yeah, good question. Yeah, great question, right? Um, and, and that, so, so uh, the short of it is that it starts at two inch. Uh, so we have two inch mechanical joint, two inch flange, and even a two inch threaded valve. You want to yeah. show that? Up here. Um, and the only difference is, again, the end connection. So this one is threaded. Very popular valve, two inch threaded, screwed in, but it, but the size that we go through uh, flange of mechanical joint is two inch through twenty four inch, and we have twenty four inch, twenty inch, eighteen inch. We we do have those all in stock, and that's another thing that, that a lot of the distributors will come to us for because they typically stop at maybe twelve inch. Mm -hmm. uh, so anything fourteen inch and above, and we can ship that same day. If you need twenty four inch gate valve tomorrow, it can it can happen. And you know that's that's that happens a lot, whether it's mechanical joint or flanged. Okay. Um, is that GFF TV in the catalog, and what pipe do you have attached? Yes. So uh, the GFF is in the catalog, and the pipe that we have attached. Maybe if this is the question, is this is PVC Schedule Forty? Uh, I'm sorry, PVC Schedule Eighty pipe nipple that I just pulled off the shelf. It has the same diameter as steel pipe. And so I'm using a transition accessory set. So in macro terms, this is a 100 MJX, X meaning it's a transition. Uh, if, if it were a 100 MJ accessory set with no X, then you would use that to put ductile iron pipe or C900 pipe into this valve. Iron pipe and PVC pipe have a smaller diameter. So you need a thicker gasket in order to put this in the same valve. And that's what the transition is. So it's a it's a 100 MJX on the accessory set. And uh, I guess the pipe nipple is what N NPX, probably something like that, NPX nipple okay. pipe schedule, extra heavy. That's what it is, yeah. Okay. Um, finally, are all these NSF certified? Absolutely. So uh, NSF approved, um, UL approved, and made to the AWWA standard. I'm sorry, thank you. Excuse me, keep coming in. Uh, is the flange class 150 and 300? Um, these are these are actually class 150 flanges. Um, I guess that's the short answer, but yeah, a three 300 pound flange is something again that's in the macro line, but it's in the industrial side and higher pressure. I guess is what that would be. But these are all typically 150 pound flange. Yes. Okay. Jim, I see two different, I know we have the operating nut, but I also see the wheel. How do they decide which way they want to go? Why do they decide wheel versus op nut? Is that just what is there existing or what they've always used? Kind of like what we talked about certain municipalities. How do we go? Um, op nut generally below ground. Okay. Hand wheel where you can get your hands on it above ground. Now I can easily see somebody messing with this. Is there a way to lock it down to where it doesn't open or somebody just can't come up and open it and close it? Um, no. Randomly? No. Um, I mean, sometimes you'll see chains on valves okay. to, to lock them down. Um, and then sometimes you will see, um, you will see people use an op nut above ground sometimes because it's not easy to turn this as much as it is with a hand wheel. And you know, the 10 year old kid that's going to mess with this generally doesn't have a, 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 tool. a tool big enough to get on an op nut. Right. So that's actually a good question. And that, that, that happens sometimes. Okay. Um, any other uh, gate valves we haven't covered or? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, on the gate valve section, we have covered. Oh, oh, here's another thing that Matco does. And, you know, we are the only one that does it. So uh, specifically on flange valves, and you're right on point when you ask that question, because um, we, in the past, there was an assumption made that if you wanted a flanged valve, you wanted a hand wheel, it's above ground, whatever. And if and, and it came up that more and more people were saying, well, I like an op nut with that. 
And so it's kind of like one of those things where you get this question and often you're like, you know, how do you make that question go away? Right. You can serve the, cus- the customer base better, faster. And so we ship this, this same outlet that you see, this black outlet. So we ship back to each, each flange valve. We, uh, we ship an off nut extra at no charge. And so that way, when you get on the job, you got both. Yeah. And you know, when they do bury the flange valve sometimes too, not really supposed to, but they do. And and if they do, they have the off nut. Excellent. So yeah, just takes care of that in advance. Anything else here? Well, that's a plug valve, but that would be next. next. But as, far as, as far a as valve. shape valves go, um, covered that. Yeah. So two through 24 inch on the, on, on flange and MJ. Uh, on the screw valves, it's primarily a two-inch valve. Uh, as you start getting larger on the threaded valves, it's becomes, it becomes less popular because you actually need a, a big tool to operate, you know, trying to thread a four-inch piece of pipe or a six-inch piece of pipe. So they become, you know, we do have four-inch, might even have six-inch threaded, but two inches is the predominant size in that. And... Um, Okay, so I, I guess that's going to do it unless there's more questions about gate valves. Uh, there's one more question that I think we should move on in the essence of time. Um, how do you tell if a valve below ground is open or closed? Yeah, um, so it's, 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 it's a harder question probably than what it sounds like. Uh, so first off, you have to assume that whatever municipality that you're in, if it's an open left city, they're going to use an open left valve. So um, that would be pretty much the only way. I guess if you were a homeowner, um, you probably wouldn't know. So if it's a frozen valve, which is, I guess, why the question is being asked, you, you don't know. And to that point, people probably should know that when you operate any kind of a gate valve or even like underneath your sink, your valves, whatever they might be, if it's a multi-turn valve, like these are multi-turn, once you get it all the way open, then you want to just kind of back it off another uh, another turn. And if you close it all the way, you can almost back it off another turn there and still have a seal. And that way, when somebody comes to operate the valve, it's not frozen one way or the other, and they can't figure it. It'll, it will be movement, and they'll be able to take care of that issue. I think that that addresses. I think that addresses that. Um, can you use them for wastewater? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and that's bringing yeah. us into our, our yeah. later part of the presentation. Well, I think it's good just before we transition to the next part, what are the most common applications for these valves? And I guess that'll be a good way to answer yeah. this as well. Yeah. So wastewater, hundred uh, percent, you'll see these valves in wastewater, you know, everywhere. Um, so the reason being for the most part is the epoxy coating and the stainless and all that, but a lot of gate valves in the past, the smaller diameter valves, and even some of the bigger valves that are not a resilient wedge, uh, they have a they have a, a groove on the bottom, and then the gate will come and close down in this groove. Well, in a wastewater application, that wouldn't be good because debris would be gathering in this groove, right? And then the wedge wouldn't make a seal; you couldn't get a positive shutoff. So, in a resilient wedge valve, when you operate this. Uh, the rubber comes down and makes contact with the valve. And there's still, you see, there's still room that could be moved. And if you put a key on here, you could move it even, even more. Uh, and so it can it can close even if there was some small stuff under there. So in a wastewater application, that that can definitely, definitely still close. And they're used in waterworks, in wastewater, uh, in potable water. Um, you see them on fire, sprinkler lines, um, pretty much anywhere. You can use these. It's not petroleum. It's not high pressure. Not you know, steam. It's not steam. Again, yeah, pretty much everywhere that's not that. Yeah, you know. pump lift station. I guess when we talk about wastewater, we're talking about pump downstream of of pumps, lift stations for storm water, wastewater, that type of stuff going back into the wastewater treatment, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, not not designed for really a lot of solids. Is that accurate or not? Um, so not solids, no. Okay, all right. All right, so you want to move over to check valves? Um, unless is there, there, is there any other questions, Amy, else. before we move to check valves? Um, th- there's one. Uh, can you explain the features and benefits of selling the 225 series? Is that something that 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it really is an easy sell. I can tell you that. Um, getting some of the approvals on this valve, there were there were several of them that occurred uh, simply by sending the specification in, and we got the approval, which like never happens. Um, selling the valve, we went through the talking points. Uh, so the stainless steel stem, the extra secure security you have in the O-ring, uh, the stainless steel bolts, the epoxy, the availability, right? Uh, we have we have them right here in stock and, and can ship fast, faster than anybody else, really. Um, and, and so those are the selling points. So, Jim, if you were going to talk to a municipality, okay, you're going to meet with them, what are the, uh, I guess, the main things that you would say to them? Is it pretty much everything you just said, or is there anything specific that you would say to them? Okay, well, first, you got to get in the door. Okay, so number one, get in the door. Yeah, that could take you quite a long time. All right. So persistence, right? You, okay. bet, you better be So you're very, in the door. You better be persistent. And then once you're in the door, there's literally nothing in this valve that, that anyone can pick apart. We've had this valve at trade shows. We've had spies after the trade show where we saw competitors go and look at it you know kind of thing interesting interesting you know interested to see there's nothing in this valve that you can pick apart that doesn't meet the standard that's that's not up to stuff with anybody else i mean this is a quality valve i put up against anybody's okay excellent all right well with that let's go ahead and move over to our next category if we're ready are we ready to do that amy amy we ready yeah, let's move on. We can answer some of these later. Okay. And All so right. once again, the transitions are, are are pretty pretty smooth here because I think you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned uh, so a lift station, right? Right. And where you have gate valves, plug valves, check, check valves, valves, right? So um, yeah, this is. I mean, this is the, the same Stallworth valve that Mac has had in their 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 line for probably forty years. And this check valve is in that pump station that you're talking about. So there's a submersible pump. It's pumping fluids up. And then there's a check valve like this, right? I don't know if we see that. Yeah, I don't think you can see it. Oh, yeah, cool. So uh, we see that later so I can see what Yeah, so this is a lever and weight check valve that's used in those sewer applications uh, to prevent backward flow, right? So the, you don't damage the pumps or anything like that with anything. Or have backups. Uh, yeah. So um, and then... Interestingly enough, right? Sometimes these things will get installed incorrectly. So there's an arrow. In fact, on every check valve, there you'll see an arrow because you, you can't, you know, on a gate valve, you, you can you can mount that any way you want, but on check valve, it has to go with the flow. And so when the when the valve is open, the flow has to go one way, and when it's closed, yeah. It'll, it'll keep flow from going backwards. And then Maco offers, and first of all, and then you can see the, the lifting highs, right? So Thank that makes it ease for insulation, yeah. So this is a lever and weight check valve. And the weight helps it when the pump's kipping, kicking on and off, it'll prevent slam to some degree. Uh, we also have offered the spring kit in stock, another Maco item. What is that for? What is, what is that? So um, it aids it aids in the, uh, when, when the pump's kicking on and off, it'll, it'll, aid in the slam so you don't want too much of that going on right that that's just going to damage the valve and that's called slamming and so when the pump comes on the weight will help keep the pressure on the fluid and it just really does open slowly it it really doesn't slam open slam open but it can if, if you're you know if your opening pressures are, are high enough it can do that and so sometimes to relieve that is we is this spring check and so you can put this spring on the valve and hook it to this, and it will tighten. It, it will it will it will ex, extend that pressure, right? Keep it more mostly for opening, yeah. Okay. And then with the pressure on on the fluid as the as the as the uh, pump is operating, with the, with with the pressure on the fluid when the when the pump stops, it's going to come down to a non-slam as well. Uh, same thing. I mean, you can see the epoxy, right? I mean, it's just a beautiful valve, um, much like our gate valve. Everything that we do 
top notch, right? I mean, it's all stained. It's just a beautiful valve. Um, anything else? I mean, it's pretty pretty much that's it. What sizes do we have on this? Does it go all the way up to twenty four as well? Uh, it goes up to sixteen inch. Okay. And then really outside of that, you're, you're into a different type of a valve. You're into an air cylinder type of a valve, which cushions things and things like that, which we this is not what that does. Uh, but it's flat face flange, the flat face flange, as you can tell, both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, easy to lift up and out. Um, unless there's something else. No, I can't think of anything. There's a highlight. Um, 300 PSI. I don't know if the PSI re is a requirement. Is there any certain amount of pressure these can Yeah. Handle? Again, you know, some of these PSI ratings that, that show up, it's like who could who could do it's better, not, right? Yeah. You go from 150, well, I can do 200. Well, I can do 250, right? So now we're up to 300. That valve's never going to see that kind of pressure. Yeah. Never. It's going to be 50 PSI. Okay. You know, even, even if you have a high-powered pump? Yeah. You're not worried yeah. about that There's no being a there. problem? Not at all. Not at all. Good question. Though. Okay. Excellent. Um, do we have any questions, Amy, on, on our check valves? Um, can you use these for condensate? So I don't know that answer because that's that's a different application. Yeah. Um, I, I just, you know, I don't know that answer. Okay, like, fair enough. Uh, that was it. Transition to plug valves? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is our plug valve. I think it's the last thing. Second it, has, it has an operating nut on it, so you can operate it with that valve key. Same valve key you would operate a gate valve with. Same dimensions, flange to flange. Um, right behind Z is another flange to flange, but this butterfly, uh, this uh, plug valve has a gear for, for ease of operation. So it just depends on you know what what is ask for in that installation. Either you want an off nut or you want a gear. So what's the difference between a a plug valve and a gate valve if it's kind of doing the same thing, right? Yeah. Um why why would you need this versus that? And there are a couple other different kind of plug valves. So so the MATCO plug valve again is waterworks, right? That's right. what we're talking okay. about. And, and and this is almost always going to be for our purposes in, in a wastewater application. That's a, that's what we're gonna that's where we market this valve to. Um this underneath. So um so where this where these gate valves are mounted right directly stem to disc that they're straight up and down. This this plug valve, yeah, maybe that'll work too. Let's see if we can operate that. I think it will go this way. Yeah. So it, it, I don't know if that's visible or not, but so this has and it's actually called an eccentric plug valve. And, and what's meant by eccentric is that the st the stem and the disc it, it it's it's not an al totally alignment so it's got an offset eccentric um, setup to it and what that does is it really just allows it to close uh, easier and get a better seal and if you can tell there's nothing in the way. Uh, of anything going through that valve, which is really what you want in a, in a wastewater application, right? You want the stuff to move. And so uh, that's what the plug valve does. Um, you know, we see we see gate valves in the, in these applications. We see pub, pub, uh, plug valves in the same applications. It really should be a plug valve, but, you know, sometimes they're just putting gate valves in there. But either one will work. So and has worked. I mean, this technology is... is uh, 75 years old technology, right? It's, it's all manual, right? It's just straightforward. What you see is what it is. And so, it, it, you know, it, it is what it is and it works. So, Excellent. Well, let's talk about, again, application, wastewater. If I were to ask, you know, I'm a sales guy, what if what if I asked you, where's the low-hanging fruit with these valves in this product that we have within MACO? What would you say to that? Well, if I was a customer. If I was a Matco sales guy, and I am, I am a Matco sales guy. How am I doing so far? Okay, good. Uh, nobody sleep out there? No, I don't know. Y'all are still with us? <laughs> Y'all still anybody sleep out there? Okay, no. They're, I think they're still with us. We're wrapping it up. That's got a timer over here. And, oh, yeah. And we're, we're doing good. We're, we're, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. It's it's going going quickly. 
We do have a couple of questions when you're when you're done making this. Okay, when we're done, but I definitely want to make sure that everyone knows. Okay, who are the guys we need to be in front of with this yeah. stuff? And and what are the, you know, we talked about pump lift stations. I want us to exhaust any opportunities that are out there. And also, anyone listening, um, if you'd like to chime in and maybe uh, give us some applications that you've come across, um, we'd love to hear from you as well. But just off the top of your head, where are some guys that you would want to go see? Yes. Yeah, so presenting the product, right? If, if people don't know we have it, it's not going to sell. And Matco does a great job with literature. Um, on the gate valve. Yeah, I got one there. So when you walk into anywhere with the municipality or an engineer anywhere, or even a distributor for that matter, and you have to have talking points, right? When you walk in, or what, what are we going to talk about today? And so when you open this up and you show it to them, I mean, that's the beginning. Okay. And the same thing with this, this piece of literature here. Everything that, everything that, 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 that anybody, I'm just going to say anybody, wants to know about this type of valve is in here. And these valves all kind of go together in the same type of, of installations. So when you have that gate valve, and even more so if you have this brochure, it, this brochure has gate valves, plug valves, check valves. They all work together. So when you go in there, I mean, your money, you're just showing these guys. It's a system. We got it, yeah. you know. And the Maco name's been out there for 70 years, you know, and we've been doing resilient wedge valves for over 40 years, you know. Right. So, I mean, it's it's not the it's not an unknown. So earlier we talked about municipal approvals, right? Uh, it, I, we, I think we both will agree that's super important to, to have that. There are jurisdictions that it really doesn't matter. Um that they just want, they need to put either a place of valve or again, you said availability is important, but how have you been able to kind of navigate through approvals and, and still be able to kind of work and, and offer this type of product in the market? Yeah. Uh, it, it, so with regards to approvals, again, you, you know, you, you've got to make the calls. You've got to get in there and see the municipalities. You've got to understand that for the most part, you know, you're inconveniencing their their day, you know, at the very least their hour, right? So they they have to put their name on the change. Everything's going quote unquote fine. Why should I take a Matco valve? Well, you know, why are you bothering me with this? You know, kind of thing. You get that sometimes. You just, you know, persistence again. Uh, but there are other times where you just, you have these meetings and you sit down and you show them. Uh, and I mean, I remember sitting uh, in Broward County around a conference table of eight engineers and we showed them our valve and they took it apart, literally had wrenches, took it apart. And, you know, they, 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 they you know, we submit pressure tests and we can submit tensile strength kind of tests, which they'll generally ask for. They'll want to know, you know, yeah, it's pretty, but, but is it going to do the job? Uh, and so, like I said before, these engineers and no one else can can point to anything in this valve and tear it apart and say that's not going to cut it because these valves cut it. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Um, Amy, there were some questions that, that came up. We'd like to. Yeah. Add. Can the plug valve be used as a balancing valve like the, like the Keystone drum, Owen? Absolutely, it can. And in fact, this valve that we're looking at here has has stops on it. Uh, which may be hard for you to tell. Uh, this is kind of a really an overview of an answer for whoever's asking that question probably knows more in, 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 than what I'm going to say here, but it's okay. Uh, but you can balance, you can you can uh, do half throttle, so to speak, on this valve. Um, you can see the groove here. Um, this can be loosened and tightened. It has stops open and closed. And so this valve can can be used for that purpose. So that, this brings up a question I have. Gate valves work best when they're all the way open or all the way closed, right? Would you agree with that? In fact, that's the only way to use okay. a gate valve. So if you're not going to have it all the way open or all the way closed, plug valve probably is your best. Option. Plug valve, ball valve, butterfly valve. Yeah, pretty much anything without a gate. And the reason you wouldn't want to use a gate is because, uh, you know, if that if the gate is only halfway open or closed, if you will, and it's sticking down into the flow of the fluid coming, you know, you're going to have pressure. It constantly puts on that, and then you're going to have wear and tear of parts. And it's, 
a so gate probably, any kind of a gate valve is 100 percent full open or 100 percent full closed now i know he earlier you had mentioned whenever you close it to kind of come off of it a little bit that will not affect whether it's open or closed because there's some give a little bit of give i guess on the top yeah because this is a resilient wedge valve right so as you're you know as you're closing it, right, it's going to squeeze down on that bottom, you know, and, and, and to a point, let's say it's 90 foot pounds, right? And no, very few people use a torque wrench when they're closing these, right? Yeah. They just close it and you, you wouldn't really want to muscle it, but you close it. And then I'm always going to just, just get it off of that hard close. Just a little bit. Yeah. And still have a seal. For the most part, it's just never an issue. Okay. For the most part, it's not an issue. But to that question of somebody saying, hey, how do you know if a valve is open and closed? Well, the reason they're asking that is I think is because that valve's frozen and I can't turn it left and I can't turn it right. That's a touch. Gotcha. That's a touch. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, can you use the plug valve for throttling or the flange valve instead? So um yeah, so we 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 kind of covered that right with the balancing part of things. So throttling, yes. Um, and then I think what they meant on the flange might have been the gate valve. And I think we just covered that, right? Gate valves, 100% open. So no, no on gates, yes on blood. Okay. Are these valves AIS compliant? Uh, absolutely not. Um, these valves, AIS being American, uh, these valves are made either in China or in Thailand. And again, uh, UL, uh, UL facility, UL tested. So, uh, but not American made. Okay, I think I can even answer. So uh, we're an industrial distributor. So we call on food plants and industrial plants. So replacement valves are available to us. Can we get flyers for our sales staff? Some are old school and want a piece of literature. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be sending out relatable literature uh, after the after the webinar, um, and. It's digital, but if you give us, you know, if you tell us who you are, we can send it out to you. We have printed versions as well. Any other questions, Amy? Um, let me see. No, well, one came in earlier, but you guys were talking. I think it was the previous one. Why does one hand wheel mount on top and one on the side? Yeah. Side versus top, top, something like this, you know. It's the configuration within, you know, the valve. Um, oh, I see. Okay. It is a configuration of the valve. Uh, yeah. So, so the way that we're showing that this valve in line right now is, uh, I guess you could, I, I, I mean, I guess you could do it the other way too, but for the most part, uh, on a plug valve, this is, this is the configuration that you're going to see because when you operate that plug, you want it to move out of out of the way in, in that configuration. With a gate valve, it's you know, it could be either way. And it and, and being a gate valve that it's a pressure valve or a plug valve, they really can be mounted horizontally or vertically. I mean, anyway. So I guess what I'm talking myself into saying <laughs> is the answer is you really could put them any way you want to put them. It would just depend on the installation. So because ours are, could be mounted horizontal or vertical, we typically don't, if there's a valve that can only be installed one way, they would do this, I guess, to have a different. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be that, hey, I can't reach that if it's pointing that way. Ah. You know, so the installation's right here. Face. You would want the hand wheel to be right here. Or the installation's kind of in the ground and there's a valve box, maybe a concrete meter box or whatever, and you want to pull the lid out and then you want to be able to operate this way. So it's going to be mounted in line the way to, to operate it manually. Okay, excellent. Um, let's go ahead and transition into um, new products. Can we do that? Oh, we do have a new product, yeah. Uh, we just have- I don't want to forget about it. Well, we, yeah, we just have the PowerPoint that I guess Amy- Yeah, mentioned. no, I can put that back on. Um, are we done with questions? We do have more questions. Yeah, no, we're good. Um, we got time. We got uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah, let's just, uh, um, we can get through a couple of these. Um, what's the max pressure for the check and plug valve? Um, so 300 PSI on the check valve, 200 PSI on the plug valve. And I just want to reiterate in, in 
where these valves are getting installed, you're never going to see those kind of PSIs. It's kind of like a marketing ploy that, you know, my, my, my valve is higher PSI than your valve. And, and, and to that point, the standards change along the way. And so the valves change along the way. That used to be 175 PSI 20 years ago. And then it moved to 200. And now it's 300. And, and it could probably handle way more than that. When they test that, they probably test mm -hmm. that to 600 PSI. I guess that the, the reason it would be important if the specs call for a 200 PSI plug valve, are we going to meet it or not? Right? Yeah. And that, so it's important in that, yeah, does it meet the spec? That's right. It, is, a, it, is the spec driven to say that I have a 200 PSI system? No. Right. No. But somebody's looking at valves and are going, oh, I see all these are 300 PSI. Let's make sure our valves at least 300 PSI. So I get that. Okay. Um, is the plug valve bi-directional as well? Uh, pl plug valves are bi-directional. Uh, they have a, they, they're marked with a seat end. So kind of like, a, like the check valves will tell you, um, which way the flow is going. Uh, plug valves are bi-directional, but at least it, will, it, it wants you to know where the seat end is. So that's the way it's going to close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can the check valves be mounted in a vertical application? So uh, my my initial reaction is going to be no because of, you don't you don't know the head pressure and things like that. Um, it's really not the valve for that. It can be yes. I, it, it would have to be determined. So a horizontal installation is what's preferred, and we should probably just stay with that. If somebody has a you know a need for a vertical we we could talk about that but there are other valves that are made for that but it's funny because then the one before that was is it best to put up to six inch in a vertical situation yeah so <laughs> there you go right we're going down that <laughs> yeah um are matco plug valves lubricated non-lubricated or available both ways yeah so that's kind of like when we talked about the gate valves we said what don't you know what doesn't this do or whatever uh, so you're going to hear lubricated come up, and that is a totally different plug valve, uh, typically high pressure, totally different application. So this is non-lubricated. But people in the business don't even really talk about it that way. It's it's only the people that know about lubricated valves. They're looking for lubricated valves that ask about lubricated. But yeah, so this is not not it's lubricated. usually higher pressure, right? Higher, higher, higher temps, yeah, is where you see the lubricated valve. So maybe the industrial supply houses probably would be looking for something like that. Um, okay, so going back to the 225, I think is where this question originally came from, and it's been posted repeatedly, um, is you had said that it's not used for solids, but wastewater has solids present. Can you explain that? Yeah, so I just didn't really know what he was talking about, solids, right? Mm -hmm. What What is solids? Yes, wastewater is solid. Yes, these are wastewater valves. Yes, if, if this valve is trying to close on a solid in wastewater, and it doesn't close and you open it back up and there's flow, the odds are that that solid is going to pass through and then close. So in that application, yes, wastewater application is what, what these valves are all used for and, and, and they can be used for that. Okay. And one final question is, is the check valve a spring or swing? Yeah. So, and, and that's a, that's a good question too, because Matco um, the good thing about Matco is that our valve is, it begins as a swing check. And so let's bring that front and center again real quick. So it's the same, it's the same valve, different model. So our swing check, uh, is referred to as a 120W. And the 120W is going to be this valve, but it won't have any of this on it. And this is tight, so I can't get it off. So it will just be a valve without this lever and weight and without the spring kit. To make it a lever and weight valve, it changes our part number from a 120W to a 120WC. That's when we put the lever and weight on it. It becomes a lever and weight check valve. And then further, if you feel like you need something more to help out with, with SLAM, you can put a spring kit on here 
and that's an add-on item. So you would buy a 120 WC because you have to have the lever. If you didn't have the lever and you just had a 120W, you would have nothing to mount the spring kit to. So you would have to buy a lever and weight check valve, the 120WC. And then also as an add-on, this is a P as in part, 120W, SK for spring kit. So as an add-on part, P 120W, SK for the spring kit onto the lever and weight. All right, I want to be conscious of the time. We've got five minutes left. Um, there's two questions. Okay, so is the gate valve the only valve that can be fixed under pressure? Um, uh, it's, yes, I'm laughing because you, would, you sure wouldn't want to have either of these valves that are mainly wastewater. You wouldn't want to have these having flow and going through them and then try to open these up. So the answer to that is yes, for sure. Okay. Can you add weight or order a heavier weight for the swing check? No. See, now now I think that question came from, you know, wherever that, that they're thinking, you know, um, I, maybe I do have a slam. What else can I do? Well, now you're starting to get into a different application, right? And this probably isn't the valve for you. So that's when you start getting into you know, air cylinder type valves where they're like a shock absorber and, and it, will, it will prevent that slamming. But now this pretty much is what it is. Uh, maybe the only difference is um, in, 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 in some of our competitors valves, when they sell a spring kit, um, they don't, I guess I should just say with the lever and weight installed, you can also put the spring kit on as an add-on item. So you would have the benefit of the weight and the benefit of the spring kit. But typically what you, what you see from other people is when they're advertising or marketing their, their spring valve, it doesn't have the weight on it. So it's just a spring levered operated valve where ours, you kind of got a little bit more leeway. So I guess that the answer would be that yes, putting both of these on at the same time would help you uh, if, if you had a slam situation, a slight slam situation. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to put, the final slide up if you want to talk about the oh system. yeah that's a cool slide amy thank you uh, yeah <laughs> so uh yeah that's our new valve it's really going to go in line and and the thinking you know several years ago with matco and the literature and and all of this is you know this is all going to come together and so this is a plant valve and and typically you'll see these valves in plant application as well different plants so that's what we're going to be adding um soon i mean maybe maybe in 24 maybe 2024 hopefully great well i'm gonna stop sharing that's great so thanks guys this was a very informative presentation mm -hmm. um stuff, we man. are going to put the recording on our site and we'll send out links to it. We'll send everybody links to the related uh, literature. And if anyone has any other questions, definitely reach out to us, um, marketing at maco-norca.com. Um, great. And I'll uh, I'll share the remaining questions with Jim and Zed, and we can get those answered for everybody as well. Sounds good. And, and thanks, everybody, for the questions. Uh, really enjoyed it. Really appreciate it. And thanks for your interest in the Maco valve. Thanks, everyone. See you.